Hi, people. This is Sandra from The Source News on the Bible Talk Show. Today, we're going to take a look at um, Jonathan Kahn, um, his uh, prophetic um, prophetic um, announcement to us uh, for regarding Biden's State of the Union, deception. You know, in life, there's a lot of deception. There's a lot of lies. There's very little truth. And um, we need to learn how to discern between lies and truth. And Jonathan Kahn is very good at doing this. He has written many books and he's guiding us through the times, the end time things that are going on right now. I encourage you to listen to this video and watch it and then search your heart to see if you feel this is truth or a lie. And also the most important thing today, why I come on this, this news channel here is you need to give your life to Jesus if you haven't already done so. We're running out of time. We're living in the last days. Here we go. Gave his State of the Union address, and it was major. The Republicans gave their response. This is going to be my response to the President's State of the Union address, because there are a lot of things said, a lot of things shouted, and a lot of things hidden, and there was deception, and we need to expose it. This is Jonathan Kahn. And this is where these messages and prophetic updates are going to come from. If you're not subscribed, to not miss them, hit subscribe. Now, I'm not going to get into the issue of the Ukraine taxes, immigration, or the economy. With the economy, the president basically said the economy is better than ever. And if you believe that the economy is better than ever, they have medication for that. But what I'm going to focus on is what he said that most touches on good and evil. And we're going to expose deception. Ready? Let's begin with the first clip. Like most Americans, I believe Roe v. Wade got it right. Actually, most Americans believe there should be limits on the killing of the unborn after three months of pregnancy. Biden and the Democratic Party are campaigning to have it legalized up to birth, killing a baby basically up to birth. The same baby that would have been protected if it was one minute later can be killed one minute before. And babies in the womb suck their thumb way before birth. But the president and the Democratic Party, they are without question advocating that babies who suck their thumbs can be legally murdered mm -hmm. and should be if the mother wants to murder them. Mm -hmm. I thank Vice President Harris for being an incredible leader defending reproductive freedoms. Reproductive freedom. Notice what's happening here. He's avoiding the A word. This is called a euphemism. He's using words and phrases to avoid saying that word that describes the killing of an unborn baby. What does that mean? It's a dead giveaway that something's being covered up. There's a dead giveaway in this case that that something is evil or you wouldn't have to hide it. He's replacing abortion with reproductive freedom. So he doesn't have to tell you that it's about killing babies in the womb. Defending reproductive freedoms. Notice the words reproductive freedom. It's the exact opposite. It's not reproductive, it's anti-reproductive. It's stopping reproduction and freedom. What is that? Same strategy of calling it choice, pro-choice. Any act involves choice. To murder involves choice. To rape involves choice on the part of the rapist. The word choice has nothing uniquely to do with the act of killing an unborn baby any more than any other act. So why do they use the word choice? because they don't want to say that which it actually is, which is to kill, to murder a child in the womb. The very fact that they use words like choice or reproductive freedom is a revelation that what they're talking about is evil and has to be covered up by words to obscure the evil. And freedom? What about the child? What about the child's freedom? What about the child's life? You're destroying the child's freedom and life under the guise of freedom. Okay, watch. My predecessor came to office determined to see Roe v. Wade overturned. He's the reason it's overturned, and he brags about it. So Biden is condemning Trump for overturning Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is the enabling of killing babies. Overturning it is to stop the enabling of killing babies and to save lives. And they estimate that that overturning has saved tens of thousands of lives. But Biden is seeking to shame Trump. He's the reason it's overturned, and he brags about it. He's speaking as if it's an offense. How dare he? He brags about it, as if it's an abomination to save the lives of children. 
If you're saying that Donald Trump was responsible for it, then you just gave anyone who takes God seriously, who seeks to be a true Christian, a reason to go to the voting polls. Now, I don't believe we've ever seen a president of the United States so brazen in championing the murder of the innocent. How brazen can you get? And for someone who says that they're a Catholic and who claims to be a Christian, to rail for the killing of the unborn, whom the Bible says are made in the image of God. Watch this. Join us tonight is Kate Cox, the wife and mother from Dallas. She's become pregnant again and had a fetus of a fatal condition. Her doctor told Kate that her own life and her ability to have future and her children in the future were at risk if she didn't act. Notice the words, had a fetus, not a child. That's another thing that's used by those who are for the terminating of babies, fetus. Now, it has always been in the past when a woman was pregnant, it said she is with child. But now the word child is removed. The word child is removed from the language so that the actual child can be removed from the womb. Fetus. Why use it? Because it's a Greek word. And so it's Greek to those who hear it. It's foreign. The idea is to make the child foreign, alien, not human. If you can dehumanize someone, if you can take away their humanity, you can take away their life. And that's exactly what the president is doing here. That's what the Democratic Party has been doing. That's what America has been doing. Fetus in Greek actually means offspring or childbirth, childbirth. But you wouldn't know it because it's in Greek. It's behind the mask. Notice what else the president says. Had a fatal condition. So here the president is saying the baby had a fatal condition. So what do you do? You kill it. How do you solve a fatal condition? You kill the one with a fatal condition. So you can see where this is going. The act of killing unborn children is a fatal condition. So if you're against fatal conditions, you have to be against abortion. Life is a fatal condition. It leads to death. Does that mean you can kill a human being? If you can kill those with fatal conditions, then a lot of people can be killed. Watch. Because Texas law and Her ability to act, Kate and her husband had to leave the state to get what she needed. What her family got through should have never happened as well, but it's happening to too many others. Okay, the president said they have to leave the state. This should never have happened. Well, there are worse things in the world than having to travel. Many people travel for medical treatments across the entire country. There are things that are worse, like getting murdered in your mother's womb. That's a little worse than having to take a trip. But the president's entire case is deceptive because most abortions have nothing to do with this. And the president isn't advocating a policy that's only about children with fatal conditions. Most pro-life laws make exceptions in the case when it involves the life of the mother. He's advocating for the ability to kill any and all children simply because the parent wants to kill them. The overwhelming majority of the 60 million plus children who have been murdered in America, were murdered because their parents wanted to. And that is what the president is advocating for. And notice what else he said. Kate and her husband had to leave the state to get what she needed. Notice again, he won't say it. He won't say what it is. He speaks around it. She's getting something. What is she getting? A present? She's getting what she needed. Again, he won't say the A word or speak of the killing of the child. It has to be covered up with euphemisms because evil has to cover itself. Watch this. There are state laws banning the freedom to choose, criminalizing doctors, forcing survivors of rape and incest to leave their states to get the treatment they need. There it is again. He can't stop. Freedom to choose. To choose what? To choose to go to the circus, to bake cookies, when does English stop after the word choose without saying what you're choosing? Again, it reveals the evil of this act. And again, he won't say the word, but he'll say to get the treatment they need. The treatment they need. The definition of medical treatment is the management or care given to a patient to combat disease or disorder. 
So the treatment here is to combat a disease or disorder. What's the disease? What's the disorder that has to be combated by this treatment? The baby. Watch. Many of you in this chamber and my predecessor are promising to pass a national ban on reproductive freedom. No, it's not a ban on reproductive freedom. It's a ban on reproductive termination by murder. By twisting this act into a positive thing, he and they twist those who oppose murder as if they are stopping something positive. They're banning freedom. If it's a ban, it's a ban of the banning of life. It's a double negative, which is a positive, which every law against murder is. So let's translate. It's a law that prevents people from killing babies. My God, what freedom else would you take away? What other freedom? Well, it's not a freedom, but if you want to call it that, then what other freedoms? The freedom to rape would be one, the freedom to inflict violence, the freedom to steal. But this is the same president and party that is for the taking away even of the freedom to speak and freedom of conscience. That is, if you say words or express thoughts that are not acceptable in the realm of wokedom, you can be silenced or fined. This is the same administration. That's putting old women on trial for protesting the killing of the unborn outside the clinics in which they were killed with a possible punishment of 11 years in prison, freedom. It's the same administration that had over 20 police, FBI, DOG agents raid the house of a pro-life father with guns pointed to take him away in front of his wife and children, freedom. This is the same administration and party that has sought to force doctors to mutilate children in gender transitioning against their conscience. The same party that sought to force nuns to fund the killing of children against their faith. The same president that signs a bill to force everybody to bow down before same-sex marriage against their conscience. And the same party that has passed laws in America mandating that if a parent does not go along with a hormonal or surgical transitioning of their child to appear as the opposite sex, the government will take the child away from the parent. Freedom. Let's see that again. My God, what freedom else would you take away? He says, my God. Mr. President, don't bring the name of God into what you're doing. Don't take the name of God in vain. Worse than that, do not take the name of God as a means of implementing an agenda that wars against the very ways and word of God and in the words of God is an abomination. I don't know what God you can call my God when seeking the death of children, but the name Baal comes to mind and the name Molech. Watch. Look, it's a decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court majority wrote the following. And with all due respect, Justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. Okay, now he's rebuking and shaming the Supreme Court. Women have electoral political power. What does that mean? They're going to vote the justices out of office? Mr. President, do you realize that you cannot vote Supreme Court justices out of office? Watch this. You're about to realize just how much you rely on that. Those bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade have no clue about the power of women. The Supreme Court is going to find out how right it was. Having no clue about the power of women, what does that mean? Are all women for this act for abortion? It's the dividing of people into classes and special groups pitted against each other that the left does. Wow, this is horrible. This is horrible. Our government, you can't even call it a government. The people that are in, in power are corrupt. They're evil. Wow, this is exhausting to watch. It is really exhausting. And when this 2024 comes along for voting this year, people, I hope you really check your heart and your mind who you're going to vote for. Because Please do not vote for Biden. Oh, my God. They're, it's horrible. Find someone that loves the Lord, someone that has positive um, information that they want to um, fulfill in office, but possibly um, do not vote for Biden. You know, God is in control. We'll see what's going to happen. But this is absolutely mind boggling to me about our government. I don't watch politics that often. 
But the way jo Jonathan Kahn shows this is just like shake your head. Woo! This is terrible, 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 terrible. And people stand up and applaud. These people probably don't know Jesus. These people are not having woken up yet. These people are bribed and coerced and maybe even um, um, have demonic spirits in them because anyone to applaud what this is about is not a very kind, loving person. This is just, this is just overwhelming. All right, okay, let's go back. Mr. President, do you realize that many women are pro-life? And do you realize that the deciding vote that overturned Roe versus Wade was cast by the last justice to come on the bench at that time, and her name was Amy Barrett, and that Amy Barrett is actually a woman. Mm -hmm. That was the power of women, and she cast her vote. This is not a male or female issue. It's a human issue. Who do you think half of the children who are killed in this act are? Women. They're female. female. They're little girls, little women. It's not anti-women for women to have children or to have women children. It is anti-women to kill female girl babies in the womb. Over 60 million children were killed in the womb, and half of them, over 30 million of them, were female. Forget about their political power. They're not voting because they're dead. Mm -hmm. And those women in Congress who cheer these words, none of them would be alive today if their mothers felt the same way. Their lives would have been snuffed out years ago. In fact, Mr. President, if your mother felt that way, you wouldn't be here to make this speech and rail for this act. Your life would have been killed. Watch. It's you. If you, the American people, send me a Congress that supports the right to choose, I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of land again. What was that? Let's play that again. It's you. If you, the American people, send me a Congress that supports the right to choose, I promise you, I'll restore Roe v. Wade as the law of land again. Okay, if the American people vote an anti-life Congress, you, the president, will restore Roe versus Wade as the law of the land. Mr. President, do you realize that Roe versus Wade is not a law that you can vote or unvote in Congress? It's a Supreme Court decision. You can't vote away a Supreme Court decision. You railed against Trump and his followers for not accepting the outcome of the election and wanting to overturn it when things didn't go their way. But now you want to overturn a Supreme Court decision that didn't go your way. Watch this. Folks, America cannot go back. I'm here to, tonight to show what I believe is the way forward, because I know how far we've come. America cannot go back. They have to move forward with the president. Actually, the word in Hebrew for repentance, shuv, means to go back, to return. I want to buy your house. I can pay you cash for your house no matter what condition it's in. He says, I'm here to show the way forward. Well, Mr. President, I have a question about that, about the way forward. What is the way forward for the over 60 million Americans who were killed in the practice that you are now railing must continue and expand? What about those millions of Americans, the oldest of whom would now be about 54 years old? Could be grandparents. The youngest are being killed right now. What about them? What is their way forward? They don't have one because you and those who have advocated this saw to it that they could be killed before their birth. How do they have any less right to live than we did? Now, the president spoke about something else. Watch. History is watching another assault on freedom. Join us the light is Latoya Beasley, a social worker in Birmingham, Alabama, 14 months ago. 14 months ago, she and her husband welcomed a baby girl thanks to the miracle of IVF. She scheduled treatments to have that second child. The Alabama Supreme Court shut down IVF treatments across the state, unleashed by a Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. She was told her dream would have to wait, but her family had got through should never have happened. Unless Congress acts, it could happen again. Okay, he said the miracle of IVF, that's in vitro fertilization, and he calls it a miracle. So it's a miracle to have fertilization, conception, but we should be able to kill that miracle. 
The same president who rails and rails for the ability to kill unborn children now suddenly speaks as if he and his party are champions of life. And those evil conservatives or Republicans or Christians are against life. Christians are for life. And most Christians in America do not have a problem with fertilization treatments as long as they don't violate God's word. What's the issue that he's talking about that many Christians don't fully understand? In vitro fertilization speaks of fertilizing an egg outside the womb. If it involves one egg, that's one thing. But the problem is that doctors often want to increase their chances by having several eggs getting fertilized. If life begins at conception, as it does, then what happens to those other fertilized eggs? Those eggs are then either frozen, perhaps permanently, or die frozen, or are disposed of. Then you've ended a human life. That's the problem that the president would not talk about. Again, it's about destroying human life. Now, they talked about this on The View, and one of the ladies reprimanded the other by saying, it's not human life, it's not viable. Okay, first, there's no argument that it's not life. It clearly is life. There's no argument that it's not human. It's clearly human. It's nothing else. So it's human life. But the argument of, quote, viability is a totally artificial, made-up, arbitrary, fraudulent argument. What it says is, if the baby can't survive on its own outside the womb, then you can kill it. What is that? If the baby would die after you ripped it out of his mother's womb, you can kill the baby. The baby is going to live unless you kill it. And so now... Those who can't survive on their own, you can kill them? Mm. That's a lot of people. Babies who are born are inviable on their own. When is your child viable? When he or she gets a job. The sick, the weak, and many old people are inviable. They can't live on their own. So now you can kill them? You can see where this is all going. Mm. It's like saying if I throw an old crippled person overboard into the water and they can't swim they drown then they deserved to drown anyway mm -hmm. there's only one point that's not arbitrary as to human life begin and that is and always will be conception the president then goes on to something else and stop stop denying another core value of america our diversity across american life banning books it's wrong. Okay, stop oh denying God. another core value of America. Book banning is wrong. Book banning, what is he talking about? Not about books being banned from existing, but for children in school or libraries not to be exposed to that which is inappropriate for children, which has always been part of America and parenthood. The books that parents are telling schools not to expose their children to are basically pornographic with text and illustrations on how to perform boy-on-boy -boy sex, some advocate man-on-boy sex, in the public school system. Now, I'm going to show you a little example. We're blurring this because we don't want to reproduce it, but this is actual material being given to your children by the public school system. So the president is saying it's a core value of America to give pornographic books advocating alternate sexuality to your children? You mean George Washington or the Puritans would have been in favor of doing that? Mm -mm. The truth is, it's actually an American core value to ban pornography from children. It has been the rule up until now. And here is the president whose people ban. Wow. The corruption of our country has gone beyond about, it's gone beyond what you can even imagine. It's it's just unbelievable that they would allow pornography and uh, books in the school for our kids when we try so hard at home as parents to not allow that in their lives, to uh, have parental guidance through the social media that they cannot be looking at this stuff. And our own president allows this stuff. Oh, my God. It's just it, this is horrible, horrible. <laughs> Not pornography for children, but books like Dr. Seuss, Mark Twain, and the Bible. And whose people ban those who say marriage is between a man and a woman. That they have banned. But pornography for children? No. 
they've deplatformed those people, fired them, persecuted them. Good seeks to ban what is evil. Evil seeks to ban that which is good. So you have one side seeking to ban life, the other side seeking to ban murder. So which one is good and which one is evil? You have one side seeking to ban things like speech and conscience that have always been a part of American life, like saying it's wrong to kill unborn babies or that there are two genders, male and female. Mm. You have the other side that seeks to protect its children from that which has never been inflicted upon American children before, like pornography, which is right, which is wrong. Watch. Instead of erasing history, let's make history. Okay, I didn't know that pornographic man-on-boy sex was now our history. Watch. I want to protect fundamental rights. Pass the Equality Act. Okay, stop right there. What is that which Biden is telling the Congress to pass? The so-called Equality Act. Sounds nice. Another euphemism. What does it do? It alters the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to include gender identity, sexual orientation, and more. So that it means that every distinction of gender will be wiped out of federal law. It nullifies the Religious Freedom Restoration Act so that Christian ministries will be forced to violate the Bible or be shut down. Christian adoption agencies will have to shut down. Christian businesses will be forced to violate the Word of God or be shut down. Possibly Christian schools and colleges. Women's sports, kiss that goodbye. And it also calls pregnancy a medical condition that must be treated as in ending the child's life. So Christian doctors will be forced to perform this act. The transitioning and mutilation of children, it may even lead to the direct funding of the killing of babies by every American by our tax dollars. It is a danger. It's as dangerous as any law that has ever been proposed in America. That is what President Biden is advocating for in the name of freedom. Watch. Am I messing with training from your America? I have your back. Pass the pro act. The work is right. Okay. Biden has a message for transgender people. He says, I have your back. And then he goes to say, pass the pro act for workers' rights. Wow, that was quick. Biden has said that transgenderism is the civil rights issue of our time. Mm. And then he quickly blurts out one sentence, I have your back, and then quickly moves on. Why? Because his pollsters told him that this is not popular with most Americans. Most Americans don't want their children to be transitioned or their children's schools to indoctrinate their children into transgenderism and hide it from the parents. So he gave it one quick sentence to keep his transgender support. But make no mistake about it, his agenda would be exactly that, to mutilate thousands of American children for the rest of their lives, just as he advocates the killing of millions of American children. You see, it's becoming dangerous to be a child in America. So your vehicle's down and starting to sink. It's hard to remain calm and not panic. How to open your car door while submerged underwater? A fatal construction flaw in all recent automobiles makes it virtually impossible to escape one last thing before I bring it home. It's not what was said. It was what was shown. I want you to see. Look again. Oh, yeah. And look one more time. These were the president's most vocal supporters cheering him on, all dressed in white. What was that about? Is it a cult? Is it a Joe Biden cult? Or a new Joe Biden dress code? White, why? These were women of the Democratic Party dressed in white to appear like the women suffragettes of the early 20th century. They were wearing white though for one reason, because Roe versus Wade was overturned. They were wearing white to advocate for the killing of babies. It has to be their main thing because it determined their entire dress code. They didn't wear a different color because of a different issue, except there were a few Congress people, I don't know from which party, that had blue pins on for the hostages of Israel held by Hamas. I saw maybe six of them. But white, that was all over, all over the House, all over the Congress. White, they changed their dress, their garments, for the sake of their passion for the right to kill babies. 
But women of Congress, why are you wearing white to advocate for the killing of babies? Not for purity, it's not for holiness, mm -hmm. but for killing babies. But what does white have to do with it? I mean, the operating table could be white, but that's not because of abortion. The doctor might be wearing white or blue, that's not because of the act. Killing babies does not produce white. It produces another color, red. It produces red as in the blood of the baby you kill. You need to change that. Truth in advertising. If you want to wear the color of the act of abortion, wear blood red, crimson, something that matches up with what you're actually advocating. Red, scarlet. And it also works because it's the color of sin in the Bible. So you get with one stone to kill two birds and one baby at the same time. The Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Well, we're there. This is the American government. And this was an election speech. Elections do matter. The lives of multitudes depend on it. Even the future of a generation. America is in trouble. The nation founded to be a city on a hill has fallen so far that it can't even distinguish good from evil and evil from good. It advocates evil as good and condemns good as evil. And that was all evident in the president's State of the Union address. What is the State of the Union? The State of the Union is in danger of judgment. God takes the blood of children very seriously. And those nations and cultures that take the blood of its children, of its innocent, will be judged. Is it possible that even what happened to our country in COVID was in some way connected to all this, down to even the exact days? I'm going to share that. I'm going to share that mystery on an upcoming message on this site. And I begin speaking of it in the book called The Josiah Manifesto. But for those on the other side, listen, it's really simple. It couldn't be more simple. To kill a baby is wrong, no matter where the baby is, outside the womb, inside the womb, no matter where. None of us, when we were vulnerable inside the womb, would have wanted anyone to have been given the go-ahead to tear our bodies apart. None of us, while sucking our thumbs in the womb, would have wanted anyone to drench us with chemicals to burn us alive. How could that ever be right? Now a word to Biden. Mr. President, I know you gave this speech because of an upcoming election, but more important than an upcoming election is an upcoming eternity an upcoming judgment, an eternity with God or without him, heaven or hell. And Mr. President, you're closer to eternity than most Americans, and you will stand before God. And it's a dangerous thing to stand before God with blood on your hands. Mm. We're all going to stand before God in judgment. And if we endorse the killing of children or their mutilation, mm -hmm. then we have blood on our hands. And if we sit by and do nothing while multitudes of the innocent are slaughtered, not even to vote or pray, then we have blood on our hands. The only thing that can save America is God and turning from our sins and turning to God. Only that, only revival can save America. We have to pray for that as never before. And we have to spread the gospel of salvation with all our hearts while we have yet time. And as for you who have had this procedure or been involved in this sin, yes, it's a grievous sin. But God is the God of mercy and love, and his arms are still open to you. I spoke of the color of sin and the color of this particular sin as scarlet. But the Bible says also, though your sins are as scarlet, they shall become as white as snow. God will forgive you and wash you of all this, even this, and make you truly as white as snow. Don't be judged. Be saved. Come to him who said, you must be born again, and you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Come to me, he said, and I will receive you. No matter who is president, there's only one king. And he doesn't fade away as everything else does. It's Jesus. It's Yeshua. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the only hope for America and the only hope for you and for all of us. Come to him. Come back to him. His arms are open. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you don't miss these prophetic updates and special messages. Make sure you hit subscribe. Wow, very powerful video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it um, encourages you to give your life to Jesus. I hope that your eyes and your ears have been open and woke up to listen to what's going on in our country and our, uh, and our presidency and our government. 
that you will vote um, for the truth and not the lies. As I said, the lies are the truth and the truth are the lies. The corruption of words and the way that they turn things around to make us so confused. If you don't know Jesus, it's so easy to get confused. If you're not reading your Bible, it's so easy to get confused. And then you're fighting each other. But in essence, you need to be giving your life to Jesus and finding the truth. So God bless. We'll see you again.